Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are on the Red Desert playing as the Force of the Vampire Counts against the Skaven. And in this match I basically wanted to try a bit of a safer build and play something conventional. See how it works against the new and improved Skaven. And for my lord I decided to roll with a Lamian Vampire Lord. Now traditionally I used to run Vlad in this matchup, but the problem is that with Gisales, one of the few units Gisales are incredibly good against is Footlords, and uh, Vlad can't dodge, he's too slow on it, on foot, and um, unless you micro him super intensively, even then it's very, very difficult, and unlikely to dodge everything, and uh, he's not that flexible, so I figured, let's try Lamian Vampire Lord, and on her, we have brought a decent selection of spells, we've got Enfeebling Foe to help that frontline fight swing in our favor if my opponent went a little more melee heavy, uh, we do have Raise Dead, of course, to destroy backlines, and Invocation of Neck for the heals, she also does have Seduction, which is a great AoE slow and melee attack debuff, which can help in that front line. And Lightning Reflexes, which makes her a little tankier and more mobile, which is really nifty. Uh, finally, I actually did bring the Scepter of Stability, which I mostly wanted to bring because I was bringing Hex Wraiths. And these are a very potent unit in this matchup. Um, if your opponent is not prepared for them, then they can just run roughshod over Skaven. There's very little they can do. Um, even if they, your opponent does bring some magic tools, as long as you're able to shut them down quickly, uh, because very few of those tools are melee-based, uh, you can definitely get away with quite a bit with Hex-Rays. Obviously, be aware of Plague Monk Sensor Barrage. Besides that, they're very power powerful. My right front line here, it's two units of Graveguard. One of them is the Sternsmen, because Sternsmen are amazing. Really good in this match. Uh, on the flanks, we do have two spears on one end, one spear on the other, as well as the Tithe. Not entirely sure if it's if in the at the moment if Tithe is more valuable than two units of zombies since that is how the cost is distributed, but um, I figured why not? Let's just bring Tithe. Uh, finally, we do have two units of Blood Ice. This one, in case my opponent did go with some heavy doses of large like Rat Ogres and um, uh, Help Abominations, especially Blood Ice will deal with them much more effectively than Hex Rates will. Uh, and that's the other units we've got. We've got some chill guys, we've got some normal hex rates, and finally in the very back corner over here, because I expected my opponent to sort of camp up in the back, uh, I did bring the Regiment of Renown, Feasters in the Dusk. Now for my opponent, he did decide to go with a very wide and very aggressive build, perhaps because of this map. Red Desert, of course, a very... well, it has this big hill, so it's very difficult to play defensive unless you want to camp all the way in the back. Uh, and my opponent, I guess, didn't want to do that. Understandable. I personally am not a fan of that either. And uh, he decided to roll with Ikit Claw here. Very aggressive on a Doom Flare. Uh, Ikit has not bought the hugest amount of spells. He's got uh, Crack Skull. He's got Warp Lightning. Uh, of course, he does is on a Doom Flare, so he's got the best defense ability. Brass Orb, as well as Storm Demon. So Storm Demon's a pretty nasty little spell. Basically an Amber Spear. Does a lot of damage. Behind him, there is an Assassin who is providing a few buffs. To, his, to the nearby troops as well as himself. He's got Assassin's Trophy, Skaven Brew, uh, Rival Hide, Talisman, as well as Slippery. So very potent combatant. Definitely, potentially, if I don't play it cautiously, he can threaten my Lamian Lord. Um, a front line composed entirely of Skaven Slaves just to soak up the charge. Uh, they are backed by multiple units of Plague Monks. Now, Plague Monks are pretty strong in this match, but one of the problems with them is that they don't do well against armor, so you need to bring armor sundering, and I think that's a bit of a mistake here with this build, uh, with, my, with my opponent's choice of uh, Ikit, but not bringing uh, Plague Caster to cast the Wither on uh, my troops. But despite that, Plague Monks will definitely roll over skeleton, skeleton Spears and that sort of thing. Uh, there's also a few Clan Rats in the mix, the Regiment of Round Council Guard, who are of course unbreakable. And we do also have two units of Doom Flares, one of them the Regiment of Renown that applies Armor Sundering and Fear, which is useless here, but uh, <laughs> I guess it makes them immune to Fear as well. Uh, and then the normal unit of Doom Flares, Chevron up a good bit. Uh, finally, there is the Natty Bubos Sharpshooters, who are all the way on the flank, looking to get a bit of a surround. And I think this is not really what you want to be doing against Vampire Counts. Vampire Counts will typically bring a lot of mobile units, and they're going to be looking to crump you good. And even if they've committed most of their mobile units to the fight, there's, a, in my opinion, a very good chance that Vampire Counts will come back with a vengeance and uh, crush you. So we'll definitely see how they do. Now, immediately there's a Warp Lightning going down. My uh, my Blood Knights here just charging through, because I saw my opponent had no Anti-Large here, so I'm like, yeah, let's get these guys. Let's get them. Let's get these Doom Flares. And so in come the Hex Race. The Chill Guys just diving in. Blood Knights coming in from the flank. Now, sure, these guys get their armor buff. Literally irrelevant against Chill Guys. And Terra kicks in, and the Doom Flares are already off the field. So brutal stuff immediately. We've got this pincer going, and uh, the Hex Rays, of course, incredibly mobile troops, and uh, they don't, I believe, get afflicted by terrain. So I think they have Strider just based. It's built into the Ethereal trait. And so they are just coming in with a Vengeance. They are rolling in very, very quickly, closing the gap through the woods. Already my opponents lost the Doom Flare there, and we're simply running them down into the dirt. 
Hellstorm features in the dusk, still trying to close the distance. It's just a little bit inconvenient how far away they were. And in the pit fight, well, it could try to push through, but immediately it's caught, hit with an enfeebling foe, and the Blood Knights are going to pound down on him and uh, definitely teaching him a lesson. Though, unfortunately, uh, they're not able to quite stay in there. We did lose a few Blood Knights, but it's okay. In the pits, in the meantime, the Tithe as well as the Skeleton Spear is doing pretty horrible, but in the front line, the Sternsmen and the Death Ball of Graveguard and the Lamian Lord are just plowing through, crushing everything, and uh, not giving a damn. Over here, the Plaguewings have gotten shattered by the combined force of Blood Knights, Hex Wraiths, as well as the Spears, and uh, this is just brutal stuff. With these Cycle Charges and the, isolate, uh, the ability to isolate my opponent's troops here very, very quickly, makes it very difficult to hold this line together. And uh, these Plaguewings are going to be routed here, removed from play, and immediately we're on to the next pocket. Now, certainly my opponent is winning this flank, but the problem is this is about, like, 600 gold worth of troops. Not even quite that, but uh, 550, I think, value of troops that I'm losing. My opponent's already lost an entire unit of Plague Monks. He's lost an entire unit of Doom Flayers. He's losing Plague Monks, and he's going to be losing all these Skaven Slaves who routed, and I won't be able to get back into the fight. And that's a huge loss. Uh, for very, very little trade off. Now, the Blood Knights here are just plowing through very, very aggressively. You can see the Chillgeist in the pits there, slaying out with Ikit. The Lamian Lord just doesn't give a damn. She's in there providing her support. Now, there's the Council Guard here, who's going to be able to do an issue. They're unbreakable, makes them pretty potent. They're they're obviously not going to rout. Uh, you can see the Giselles, they're setting up and opening fire on the Tithe, which is just bad because the Tithe is irrelevant. Now, they do start shifting their fire over here to the Hex Wraiths, but of course, having big, bright, purple tracers means that I immediately see them, and shortly we are going to see the Hex Wraiths swing around to go put these guys in the dust. Uh, in the meantime, here in the pits, you can see Brass Orbs goes down, doing some damage to the Chill Geist. Uh, unfortunately, we do lose some models and HP there, but it is what it is. Over here, the Blood Knights, in the meantime, doing some more cleanup in Isle 9 against these Skaven Slaves. Elsewhere, you can see the Hex Rays just plow through, ignore Ikit, ignore the Doom Flayers, and are just going to dive in here, chasing after these Natty Boobos. I was forcing pathing them very, very aggressively. Um, my opponent doesn't have really any magic damage to deal with these guys. And it's much like my somewhat recent game against um, Indie Pride, where I just didn't bring magic damage to really deal with them. And, well, this is what happens. Hex Rays get in on the Natty Boobos, and the Natty Boobos are going to get demolished, because they just cannot stand up against these scything wraiths, and uh, they're, they're in a pretty bad time. Elsewhere in the meantime, while well, the pit fight is still going, we managed to rat off this whole pocket, and quite frankly, it's probably a bit of a misplay. I simply allow all, almost all of my mobile units to run away this way, pursuing Skaven Slaves. Really, I should have been cycle charging them back in here, and uh, helping contribute to finishing off this pocket. But my opponent here, desperately trying to perhaps rally his troops, is actually pushing through with the Dwarf Thing of Menace, as well as Ikit, and um, it's just not going to happen. Uh, Ikit actually pushes out here and gets isolated. So definitely a bit of a misplay there. He gets caught. Blood Knights are in there. They're going to take him to Pound Town. At this point, it's basically GG. Ikit's not going to be able to last very long. Actually hit him with an enfeebling foe. A bit of unnecessary overkill, probably. Uh, of course, Chill Guys prevent you from moving too quick because they do have that chilling aura. Reduce the speed down to 55. Uh, in the pits... Yeah, the, the Council Guard is still there, but we have a very healthy unit of Sternsmen around to kick in. We do still have multiple units of Spears in various shapes of Intactness, Grave Guard, uh, Chill Guys, and of course another unit of Hex Race coming back. I did forget to mention, the Feasters and Dusk engaged on a unit of Plague Monks here, and this fight was actually going badly for him. Uh, probably not the way you want Feasters and the Dusk engaged. They're a decent unit for 700 gold, but obviously not meant to crush an anti-infantry specialist, so probably want to use them on shooting, but obviously I didn't see my opponents shooting until it was too late. Council Guard in the meantime here being hit by seduction, so they're just being seduced by that hot and beautiful vampires, and uh, my opponent is forced to GG out of the stage. And um, that was that. So it's a pretty powerful build. Honestly, if your opponent goes campy on a very wide and a very flat map, you might have some issues, I could see, because the Warp Lightning Cannons are still a powerful force. People, people, in my opinion, uh, I'm going to say this is straight, just my opinion, but in my opinion, Gisales are one of the most overrated units in the game. Uh, Warp Lightning Cannons are still, in my opinion, more potent against cavalry, and if your opponent brings Warp Lightning Cannons on a very open map, you're going to have issues uh, if you can't knock them out quick. Now, you kind of try to get the Hex Race into the back line quickly, shut them down. Um, Blood Knights can get in there potentially, but you gotta swarm quick, you gotta be very aggressive, uh, you gotta plow through fast before the Warblading Cannons demolish your cavalry contingent. Because um, bringing, say, two Warblading Cannons can basically destroy this cav pretty effectively if you can keep the the, can, uh, the cannons protected. 
Besides that, Graveguard very strong in this match. They'll beat down Plague Monks. They lose to Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, and I think they lose to, the normal ones lose to Stormman and Stormman Halberds, maybe. I'm not even sure if they lose to Stormman Halberds, to be honest, because Stormman Halberds are kind of derpy. But uh, they definitely do lose to Stormman and plus Sensor Bearers. But for their price range and for cost efficiency, Graveguard are amazing. They'll trade cost efficiently with basically everything, and they'll crush Plague Monks, which are... Not a bad pick for Skaven in this match, because they do have immunity psychology, at least temporarily, because of Frenzy. Um, and they are good at cleaning out shafts, so you'll often see Plague Monks. And against those, Graveguard are stellar. Uh, besides that, uh, Hex Race, very strong, as we mentioned. Spearman is more like a filler. Uh, and I think Spears are better than the Swords, because you can deal with Rat Ogres and Helpit Abominations and units like that, if you really need to. Uh, Tithe, filler. I'm not sure. Like I said at the beginning of the video, not sure if they're better than two zombies. Beasts in the Dusk, better if your opponent goes with a very wide shooting build. Less impressive against a composition like this, where they just don't have good targets. Uh, their only decent target here was like the Natty Bubos, or Bullying Skaven Slaves, but uh, I just wasn't able to get that engage. And uh, Lamin Lord, she's good. You get that uh, sweet scepter of stability and lots of good magic, mix of shadows and vampires, definitely strong. For my opponent's build here, obviously biggest killer is lack of magic damage. And my recommendation, actually, if you're going to go aggressive, if you're going uh, balls to the wall, going ham, Bring the Regiment of Renown Sensor Bearers. They give you Immunity Psychology and an AoE, which is amazing, and they do magic damage. Um, plus, they make Vampire units crumble a little faster because they do have that contaminated debuff. Um, so if you're going to go Balls to the Wall aggressive, I could see them as being a decent choice. You still do need something to deal with large, though, so Poison Wind Globes can be okay as a point defense. Uh, people underestimate them, in my opinion, but they they do have quite a bit of strength, uh, against Cavalry especially. Um not really sure Doom Flares are the way to go. In my opinion, you'd be better off probably with a Plague Furnace, and which gives you another source of magic damage, for that matter, and Wither, and make your Plague Monks much better at cleaving through that front line. Uh, but that's just my two cents. I, I also think the Assassin is kind of useless in this match. Like, he can help you snipe a Lord, but I'm not sure how much my opponent paid there for... Um, for the Assassin. We can actually check right now. Hop into the uh, customs. Like a 920 gold assassin. like, And he got 26 kills, most of which were probably against Chaff. Because he never pressured my caster with him, or my lord with him. So, that's just rough. Uh, it's a very... Yeah, it's just not worth it in my opinion. Uh, vampire counts are not like rival high talismans kind of wasted against vampire counts since they don't have high melee attack to begin with. Um, they're probably going to be trying to beat you with fear, terror, cycle charging, damage over time effects, that sort of thing. Um, Skaven brew, yeah, it's nice. It's but it's only one use. He himself is not a great combatant. It's nine hundred twenty gold that you could take and put towards a blight scab plague back. Uh, if my opinion, opponent had cut. I don't know, like a clan rat and a Skaven Slave or something, he would have been able to do Blight Scabs, Plague... Yeah, you could cut, like, a, you know, Skaven Slaves and this, and you'd get a Blight Scabs, Plague Cavac, which would, in my opinion, do far more give you five, far more value uh, than what these three units would generate in that match. Um, keep in mind, Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats, they're much more valuable if you've got a backline to defend. But if you've got no backline to defend, they're just filler. And you don't really need that much filler against Counts, because... What are you going to do? Just break up a charge from Graveguard who has no charge bonus to begin with? Um, break up a charge from Cav, I guess. But uh, in my opinion, better off bringing like, Spears or something for that. Regardless, well played to my opponent. It was a fun, quick little blitz of a match. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you found it entertaining and fun. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. If you have any comments, criticism, questions, don't hesitate to post them. I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.